You over here admiring our beautiful chicken? Yeah, she's so green. She's got little look lines of purple and blue. Oh, look. She's a pretty chicken. She's very pretty. You're a very pretty chicken. All right, let's go take care of some babies. Good morning. Sorry for the wind. I know it's gonna pick up on this camera. We are headed to the barn. Um, it was warmer when I did chores this morning. There was snow on the ground. It's quite beautiful. Now it is just cold and windy and most of the snow is either blowing away or just melting. So Matt's not going to be in this video. I know you guys might miss Mr. Charisma himself. He is away on business for a couple weeks, so he'll be back. Unfortunately, when he is gone, nothing gets improved. <laughs> we just maintain and do the regular stuff. And we are getting ready for baby goats to go to their new homes. So we need to vaccinate worm, tattoo, trim. And uh, I thought we'd talk about buying and selling animals a bit. My goal with this channel is never for it to be preachy preachy or this is the only way you can do something because it is a firm belief of mine that there are many ways to do things right. It's really just a conversation and maybe suggestion from one person who has bought and sold a lot of animals, mostly from a horse perspective, but now from a livestock perspective. And um, I'm gonna go in the barn because I'm sure the camera's shaking because my hand is, it's cold. It's like a cool baby. You're so cool. Oh goodness, you're gonna nibble. Okay, ready? Ready? First, buddy, he's a very calm boy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's always been real pretty chill. Yeah, he's pretty chill. We like him. Okay, I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but real quick before I stab her, because she's not going to be happy with me and she's going to go right with her mama after this. But this is Holly with her messy herbal wormer face, and this is the little one that we've kept back this year. So when you breed and you raise animals, you can't keep them all, of course. Um, we kept all the dolings last year. We are keeping one this year. And this is our pick, little Holly, which is Dottie and HB's baby. And she is as sweet as her mom and as sweet as her sister. So we're very happy to have her. Now, unfortunately, she has to get a poke. Okay, ready? Mark your hand. There you go. Cut this over. You don't need this. These two don't. Okay, go with Mama. She did good. She did good. Okay, so that went really smoothly. What we found, well, first of all, what we do for the babies before they leave is a hoof trim. We do herbal wormer. Um, we do a little vitamin B because everything we're doing to them is a little stressful and they're gonna, a few of these are gonna have a move, but I gave everybody vitamin B because um, of just the temperature changes. So. Just a little booster, can't hurt them. Um, we also do CD and T shot. All the does had shots about three weeks prior to delivery. So the babies just got their booster. And then um, we also do silence, which is for lice. We haven't noticed any lice, I think because we treated preventatively. Um, and then you can treat again three weeks later. So we're doing that just so they leave the farm as happy and healthy as we can. I will give you one piece of advice that I strongly recommend just because I've seen a lot on the internet of people getting scammed when they're going to purchase animals they are so excited by what they see and it's exactly what they've been looking for for a lot of people that they put money forward now I completely understand the need for deposits uh, but if you have not gone to meet a person or you don't have a contract in place, I would say never send money over the internet to somebody without validating that they are, actually have that animal in their possession because a lot of people are just grabbing pictures from the internet anywhere, posting them, and then taking deposits from people 
or taking the full amount of the goat or horse or cow or pig and then they just disappear. So uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm not particularly fond of the sound of my own voice or talking head videos. So I'm just going to try and clean the stall while I talk about buying and selling animals. So this kind of stemmed from a recent experience reaching out to the breeder of an animal. Well, not just one, but a few of them. Because generally what my process is, is to research, figure out what it is I'm looking for, have a general understanding, um, and then find a breeder that I want to work with in advance of the purchase of the animal. So I reached out to a few breeders, um, sent them messages, uh, basically explaining where we were um, at in our lives, what we were looking for, the whole goal behind what it is I'm looking at to see if what they're raising meets with that need. Um, not looking immediately, within a year is about when I'd like to acquire this animal. And interestingly enough, I wasn't met with, you know, we have planned breedings, um, you know, I don't think it fit your needs or it would. I did get one back, which is the breeder that I'm probably going to end up working with. But um, I got the answer of, I don't have any right now, so I can't help you. And I was really clear about the fact that I wasn't looking to immediately go out that weekend and pick one of these up. So that was kind of weird. I'm used to breeders, you know, having questions of their own for me as a future home and as a breeder. I I ask those questions too, so it was interesting. Um, oh man, this might not work out. That's gross. So I'm not going to go into the specifics of breed right now, um, but I would say that as a buyer, it's really important to have a general understanding of what you are looking for. And I'm I'm really talking to people who are looking for an animal. They have a need that they want to fill, and they're looking for something specific. So first have a good understanding of what that is. Do your research ahead of time. Um, look up the breed standard itself. Uh, have a general understanding of that. You don't have to be an expert. That's okay. None of us really are. We're all should be in the process of learning, relearning, and continuing to expand our understanding of something. But have a good idea of what it is you want and some characteristics that you are looking at. Um, ahead of time. The other thing would be budget. We all have a budget. We all, you know, would hope to get the very perfect thing for the least amount of money, but that's not always how it works. So if you have a budget in mind and you're reaching out to somebody and they come back with something that's out of your ballpark, you should be able to say thank you and just, you know, continue to your search. Um, also, the way you begin a conversation is so important. I have had people reach out to me and just say, you have goats? Yes, I have goats. That doesn't mean my goats are gonna be the goats that you want. So give me a little more to go on. Have some open-ended question. Ask about, you know, the, the what the person is doing with their goats. Um, if they're, you know, in it for dairy or meat, that should be a quick one to answer. You should know what breeds you're looking for in that respect. It doesn't hurt to be a little specific in these situations. It's going to help you because you're going to end up with more of what you were looking for and it's going to help your breeder be able to tell you if what they have is what you want or not. So just a couple tips on buying. Now on the selling side of things, I would say that every seller should, what I feel, be open to letting people come and visit their farm. I'm not saying you have to be open to the public, but you know, set aside a day and a little time where you can invite people as prospective buyers um, to come over, see how the animals are raised, see the parents, all those kinds of things. It really puts a person's mind at ease. And if they're wanting to raise their animals in a certain way, most people want their animal to come from that. Um, Aspen's a really good example. I was very specific about Aspen is for the goats. She is their dog. 
So when I went looking for a breeder, I had some questions about how, where the puppies were born, because they weren't born yet, um, how they would be raised if they were already in with livestock. It was important to me that the parents were not just working dogs actively, but um, had come from generations of working dogs. So that was an easy question for him to answer because I went with these specifics and he was able to tell me and I was able to see, because he allowed us to come and visit, that he was raising exactly what we were looking for and that dog would meet our needs and she absolutely does. So that's just a suggestion. We do, we had some people that are purchasing goats and we set aside a Saturday and invited those families out and they were able to come and see the does and see the babies and then make a decision for themselves. So. Not every conversation is gonna end in a sale or a purchase, and that's just fine. That's process of elimination. So, yeah. Um, the other thing I would say for sellers is to send your goats off in the best way possible. Once the goat, goats. We're not even talking about goats, are we? No, I just have goats yelling at me because they can hear me and they think that means food, but. Um, <laughs> Send your animals off property in the best way possible. Ours have their vaccination, their first herbal worming um, trim on the goats. For the bunnies, we trim their nails. We don't vaccinate the bunnies, but we send them off in the best condition that we have. Those are the only things we're actively breeding right now. Um, so that's what I would say is send them off. Um, send with contact information so that if the home you know, if they're not very experienced and they have questions, it's very nice to go to somebody with more experience and just be like, hey, I'm having this situation, what would you do type of a thing, and then go from there. So that's my two cents on buying and selling animals. If you have any of your two cents, stick them down below. We're all learning in this process, so it's helpful um, for people that haven't had experience purchasing or selling animals. Um, my background is really in dogs and horses. The livestock part of it, oh, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> the livestock part of it is new, but it all kind of translates the same. So, yeah, you guys, I'm going to get this fall cleaned out so it can air out because after our wet weather, we have been bedding up a storm and it's going to be chilly again tonight. So, I want fresh bedding down for these babies. And we're going to say goodbye to two of our goats today. They're going off to a very wonderful home. So take care, be safe, leave suggestions down below. Thank you for liking and subscribing. We are on the road to 500. Bye guys.